जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय अद्वैता चंद्र जय गौरव भक्त वृंद जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय अद्वैत चंद्र जय गौरव भक्त वृंद दीपिका यू वॉन्ट टू रीड आई कैन रीड रामानंद राय देन एक्सप्लेन द ग्रेजुअल प्रोसेस बाय विच प्योर लव फॉर कृष्णा इज डेवलप्ड ही पॉइंटेड आउट दैट द रिलेशनशिप a living entity had with the supreme personality of godhead in any of the modes of affection is just mm-hmm. suitable for him still there are higher and lower relationships a relationship with supreme lord begins with the master and servant relationship and further develops into friendship parental love and conjugal love. one who is situated in his particular relationship with the supreme personality of godhead is in the best relationship for him but when we study these different flavors of transcendental taste in relationship with the supreme lord we can see that that the neutral stage of realization brahma bhuta is the first stage that the stage of accepting the lord as master and oneself as his servant is better that the conception of oneself as the lord's friend is even more developed that a parental relationship with the lord is of a still superior quality and that conjugal love is the supreme relationship with the lord so here lord chaitanya is explaining i'm sorry ramananda rai is explaining because ramananda rai is giving the highest goal of human life so he's saying one may be either in or uh, whichever ras one may be in whichever mellow whichever relationship he is in with krishna he is completely satisfied in that relationship he doesn't feel oh why am i in a servant relationship why is another one in the friend relationship no he is completely happy in whatever is the relationship of course when we are seeing how much the love is developed then it goes in stages no although they are all in love with krishna even the neutrality understanding that krishna is the supreme lord that is the beginning stage uh and then going on to servitorship then going on to friendship parent conjugal so with the it's as you know i like the love gets more and more deeper more and deeper but whoever is in whichever relationship for him that's the best relationship it's not like in the material world you know in the material world we always say oh the grass is green on the other side or oh, it would be happier if i was like this one or like that one or i would do this or that but that is not there on the spiritual platform whatever relationship one is in one is completely blissful in that relationship in other words self realization with a sense of servitude for the lord is certainly transcendental but when a sense of fraternity is added the relationship develops and as affection increases this relationship develops into parenthood and conjugal love ramanand rai then quoted a verse from bhakti rasamrita sindhu 2538 stating that spiritual affection for supreme lord is transcendental in all cases but that the individual devotee has a specific aptitude for a particular relationship and that relationship is more relishable for him than the others mm. so whatever may be a, a devotee may be in friendship with krishna to him that is the best relationship because that's his natural inclination and he does not want to change that relationship he does not want to go into conjugal relationship for him he is satisfied he is very happy with his friendship and same can be said for the servant so when will not say oh the conjugal ras is higher so i should go to the conjugal ras no he has this natural inclination to love krishna in a certain way and that is the most satisfying to him 
Because imagine if everyone said, I wanted to be a gopi. Then how will there be variety? How Who's going to be the birds and the trees and the parents and the friends? You know, does it make sense? You know, the, the, that's what makes it so wonderful. No, All the different rasas are there. It becomes more and more enjoyable there. Yes. Such transcendental relationships with the Supreme Lord cannot be manufactured by the mental concoctions of pseudo devotees. In this connection, Rupa Goswami has stated in his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 1 to 101 that devotional service, which makes no reference to the Vedic scriptures and which does not follow the principles set forth therein, can never be approved. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj has also remarked that professional spiritual masters, professional Bhagavatam reciters, professional Kirtan performers, and those engaged in the devotional service, according to their own men mental concoctions, cannot be accepted. In India, there are various professional communities known as Ola, Baula, Karta Bhajan, Neda, Darvesha, Shani, Ativadi. Judadhari and Gauranga Nagar, Nagari, Nagari, a member of the Venter Goswami Society or the caste called Goswami, cannot be accepted as a descendant of the six original Goswamis. Nor can so called devotees who manufacture songs about Lord Chaitanya, nor those who are professional priests or paid reciters, be accepted. One who does not follow the principles of Pancharat or one who is an impersonalist or addicted to a sex life cannot be compared with those who have dedicated their lives to service of Krishna. A pure devotee who is always engaged in Krishna consciousness can sacrifice everything for the service of the Lord, whether following principles of his older life or those of a renounced life in the line of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Such a pure devotee who has de dedicated his life to the service of Lord Chaitanya, Krishna and the spiritual master cannot be compared with professional men. So, what we, what, you know, one may pretend that he is in this relationship with Krishna, but such kind of pretending is not going to take us anywhere. It's still going to be all in our mind. It doesn't mean that we are really in that relationship with Krishna. So we may pretend to get some name, fame, adoration from other people. Other people may say, oh wow, such a great personality, already revived the relationship. But if we have not gotten Krishna, not actually in our relationship with Krishna, then what have we gained by such worship, you know? It, it's all uh, useless then. This is what Ramananda Raya is trying to say. And he's quoting Rupa Goswami because some people might engage in devotional service without following the rules and regulations. And when we do that, we create a disturbance in society because then we may become pretenders. And Lord Chaitanya does not want us to become pretenders. Lord Krishna does not want us to become pretenders. So following in the footsteps of the great Acharyas, following in the instructions of the pure devotees, that's how one must engage in devotional service. Because there are many, many people who make up their own way of... Um, way of, what do you say, so-called, so-called devotional life, but that's not really the case. Then it creates a lot, it misleads a lot of people, creates disturbance in the society, you know. So, yeah. When one is freed from all material contaminations, any one of the relationships with Krishna is transcendentally relishable. 
unfortunately those who are inexperienced in the transcendental science cannot appreciate the different relationships with the supreme law they think that all such relationships arise from maya the author of the chaitanya charita amrita has given a nice example concerning these relationships he points out that earth water fire air and ether the five gross elements develop from subtle forms to grosser forms for example sound is found in ether but in air there is both sound and touch in fire there is sound touch and form as well and in water there is sound touch form and taste finally in earth there is sound touch form taste and smell just as the various characteristics increase in the progression from ether to earth so the five characteristics of devotion increase with each relationship until all five are found in the relationship of conjugal love thus the relationship with krishna and conjugal love is accepted as the highest perfectional stage of love of god so gopal is helping us understand that you know we may think that oh relationship means material relationship is only to the body but we need to understand that the real relationships are there in the spiritual world there is real real relationship in the spiritual world that's the reason we have relationships here in the material world you know we may think oh and everything that's in the material world uh, because material world is an illusion so spiritual world has nothing it's just has nothing there but no the material world is not false it's very much real it's krishna's energy so it cannot be false but it's temporary yes we thinking of that we are the body that that is false but we are very much inside the body so then prabhupada is quoting the author of chaitanya charitamrita krishna das kaviraj goswami to help us understand that how the higher how one relationship as we as the love grows it has the quality of the the previous relationship just as ether uh ether what ether air then fire water and earth what do, do you all know the qualities which is what is an ether then what is an air your prabhupada is pointing it out somebody wants to yeah sound is found in ether but in air there is both sound and touch hmm in fire there is sound touch and form in water there is sound touch form and taste finally in earth there is sound touch form taste and smell yeah so we can see as the elements are getting more and more grosser they are getting the quality of the previous element also similarly in this transcendental relationship with krishna as the love is increasing more and more the love is getting more and more condensed love is getting more and more sweeter it has the characteristics of the previous relationship like when neutrality one progresses more in love with neutrality one will have awe and reverence and servitude that brings one to the stage of uh servitude to you to krishna then the love increases more and then one will come to friendship so friendship will have the service attitude will have that neutrality attitude then one will as one progresses from friendship to uh parent parental. yeah parental so then parental will have friend be the friendship also and also servitude you know how much service parents do for the children and friendship also you know friend parents try to be the the friends of the children and then of course as, as the lover lover all of them are included taking care of of the love of the beloved being friends with the beloved uh, serving the beloved 
So conjugal love is the highest that way. In this connection, Lord Krishna says to the damsels of Rajan Srimad Bhagavatam 10, 82, 44, devotional service to me is the life of every living entity. Indeed, your love for me is the only cause of achieving my association. It is said that Lord Krishna in his relationship with his devotees accepts all kinds of devotional service and then reciprocates according to the devotee's attitude. If one wants a relationship with Krishna as master and servant, Krishna plays the part of the perfect master. For one who wants Krishna as a son in the parental relationship, Krishna plays the part of a perfect son. Similarly, if a devotee wants to worship Krishna in conjugal love, Krishna perfectly plays the part of a husband or paramount. However, Krishna has admitted that his loving relationship with the damsels of Braja in conjugal love is the highest perfectional stage. In Srimad Bhagavatam 10.32.22, Krishna told the gopis, my dear gopis, your relationship with me is completely transcendental and it is not possible for me to offer anything in exchange for your love, even after my birth. After many births, you have given up all attachment for material enjoyment and you have searched after me. Since I am unable to repay your love, kindly be pleased with your own activities. Krishna is saying this to the gopis that he is so indebted to them. He says, you love me so much, I don't know how to pay you back. What can I do? So just be happy with your own activities. Just be pleased by your own love that you have for me. Because I'm unable to pay, repay your debt. And Krishna is God. How, like, you know, how does it mean that he cannot repay the, repay the love? Because the love of the gopis is so much, he feels himself incapable. Can we, can we even try to imagine that? God who is supplying everyone, he's the... Oh, master of all opulences he's the best of everything he has the best of everything no one is equal to him no one is greater to, than him and then he's telling the gopis I cannot repay your love so this is the loving relationship between Krishna and the gopis we cannot try to understand it from our material position because we will we, we won't be able to understand it from our material position, but the pure devotees, they can actually understand this. We can simply be satisfied by hearing about it and understanding, oh, this is a, a, a great thing happening here. And then, as Prabhupada says, you know, it's only on the liberated platform and when we are situated in our uh relationship with Krishna, can we truly be independent? Because here, here it's said that Krishna is accepting what, what the devotee, how the devotee wants to love him, Krishna reciprocates according to that. One wants to have a master and servant relationship with Krishna. So Krishna says, okay, he plays as the perfect master. Then one who wants Krishna as a son, then Krishna place as the sun. And if someone wants Krishna as a lover or as a husband, then Krishna is playing that part. So in that way, that is when we can truly be independent, when we are situated in our relationship with Krishna. We may think we are independent here in the material world, but we are not able to understand how we are controlled by the modes of nature. They really control us. So... We think that, no, no, Krishna is not controlling me, but he's controlling us through the modes, through the modes of nature. And only when we're situated in our relationship with Krishna can we be independent and we can 
act in a in this loving relationship as we want to act as we want to love as we want to please as we want to serve Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj has remarked that there is a class of common men who claim that anyone and everyone can worship the Supreme Lord according to his own invented mode of worship and still attain the Supreme Personality of Godhead. They claim that one can approach the Supreme Lord either through fruitive activities, speculative knowledge, meditation or austerity and that anyone be of these methods will enable one to reach the perfectional stage. They generally give the example that just as a place may be reached by one of many different paths, so the supreme absolute truth may one of many different paths may be worshipped. May be worshipped either as Goddess Kali or Goddess Durga or Lord Shiva, Ganesha, Ram. Hari or Brahma. In short, they maintain that it does not matter how the absolute truth is addressed, for all names are one and the same. They give the example of a man with many names. If he is called by any of those names, he will answer. Please continue. Such mentally concocted views may be very pleasing to an ordinary person, but they are full of misconceptions concerning transcendental life. One who worships the demigods out of material lust cannot attain the Supreme Personality of Godhead, although the eternal, external energy of Lord may award such a worshipper some material results. Krishna discourages demigod worship in the Bhagavad Gita 7.23. Antavattu palam te sham tad bhavati alpame sham Devan, Devad, Yaju, Yanti, Madhbhakta, Yanti, Maam, Api. Men of small intelligence worship the demigods and their fruits are limited and temporary. Those who worship the demigods go to the planets of demigods. But my devotees ultimately reach my supreme planet. Thus the supreme lord awards the benediction of his association only to those who worship him and not to those who worship their demigods. It is not a fact that everyone and anyone can reach the Supreme Personality of Godhead by worshipping material god, demigods. It is therefore surprising that a man can imagine that he will become perfect by worshipping the demigods. The results of devotional service rendered in full Krishna consciousness cannot be compared to the results of demigod worship fruitive activity or mental speculation. The result of fruitive activity is that one can go to the heavenly planets or one can go to hell. So, then here Prabhupada is pointing out that some, well, Srila Bhakti Sadanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj is saying this. So, Prabhupada is putting the comment of Bhakti, Bhakti Sadanta Saraswati Prabhupada He's saying that some people make up their own ways that, oh, I can reach the absolute truth by any way. I can take any path and have, anyway the goal is same. There are many paths to the same goal. You know, so you do your karma or you worship demigods or you take up speculative, spe speculative philosophy or meditation or take up anything, you'll reach the absolute truth. But Prabhupada is pointing out that this may sound very nice. It's very pleasing. Oh, I can do whatever I want. Anyway, the goal is the same. But it is just mental concoction. It's not the truth. Because Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, whoever we worship, we are going to go there. If we worship the demigods, we are going to reach the planet of the demigods. If we worship him, then we will go back to him. That is the fact. That is the truth. But yeah, on the mental concoction, it sounds pleasing. Oh, you do whatever you want and anyway you will go back home, back to Godhead. But that's not the truth. Prabhupada would give an example to this. In this regard, he would say, if we buy a ticket to go to, from Bombay to Delhi, we're going to reach Bombay to Delhi. It's not that we're going to reach Bombay to Chennai because we are going to sit in a train which is going to take us towards Delhi. That train is not going to take us towards Chennai. The destination is different.
So sometimes we may hear things which sound very nice, but they may not be the truth. And of course, uh, Prabhupada is pointing out the result of fruitive activity means the karma. Sometimes we do good karma, it can take us to heavens. And when we do bad karma, it can take us to hell or to hellish bodies or like animal bodies. So, and of course, when one engages in devotional service, one can go back home, back to Godhead. So as one does some activity, one gets the result accordingly. We also know, right, if we sow the seed of a rose, we are going to get a rose plant. And if we sow the cactus seed, we'll get a cactus plant. We cannot say, I'm going to sow a rose seed, uh, I'm going to sow a cactus seed and I'll get a rose plant. doesn't happen. You know, it may sound good that I can sow any seed and I will get uh, any plant. It sounds good, but it does not happen in reality. Is that okay? Yes. So if we really want to get out of the material world, we engage in devotional service. We engage in devotional service because each of us has an eternal relationship with Krishna. As we have been hearing in any one of the five classes. So, we'll stop here for today. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ki jai, Shla Prabhupada ki jai, Gaur Bhakta Vinda ki jai. Hare Krishna, thank you so much for listening in.